Uh, can everyone see? I can see. And hear can me? You guys? Okay. Cool. <laughs> yep. Yep, we can see you. Cool. Um, awesome. All right. So, what are we doing today, guys? Uh, we're doing some figure drawing. Here. <laughs> um, All right, so uh, yeah, I guess um, I'll just be, wow, there's a lot of people. Uh, I'll just be going through some figure drawing here. Um, and I guess I can just generally talk about my overall process and things that I think about. Um, and we are going to be doing traditional media today. Uh, so if you guys have questions about that, uh, feel free to ask. Um, and uh Oh, my name is Kirk, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I, um, if you don't know who I am, I, I, I teach figure drawing uh, and I work in animation right now as a viz dev artist. And um, welcome to the, the workshop, guys. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying all the light box stuff going on right now. I, I haven't actually been watching, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, all right. Um, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, was, I had a huge deadline this week too, so I've been kind of uh, dying. Oh, no. um, well, thank you for doing this for <laughs> <Yeah>. us. <laughs> thank you, Kurt. No, this is this is a good break. Uh, I finally get to do something fun this weekend. So um, cool. All right, well, let's jump in, guys. Um, I guess we can get started here, and I'll I guess I'll try to talk through um, what I'm thinking about uh as we go uh so this will be i'll do some five minute poses i guess to start off here um relatively quick um but uh so yeah in general with you know figure drawing and art in general the most important thing is to think about uh, broad to specific so setting up any kind of drawing um that's going to be kind of the main thing i'm thinking about here is what is the overall gesture and uh, getting just kind of the basic elements set up before we jump into any kind of crazy details or anything. So the initial drawings might be a little crude and kind of simplistic, but that's, that's the idea, right? And I have committed my first error here uh, by drawing off the page. That's all right. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking generally about kind of stretch and pinch, thinking about weight distribution here. And you can see that, you know, from the reference, I'm actually uh, pushing things like the tilts of her hips and things. So I'm adjusting the drawing and not so much uh, committed to copying exactly what I see, but I'm actually kind of focusing on making an interesting drawing more than anything else here. Um, so let's see, we have this and, you know, we can throw in a little bit of a construction here. So once we get that gesture set up, we can start to establish things like our rib cage here, our pelvis, I'll use kind of a box for this. And with the other limbs and things extending out, um, I'll basically be thinking about these things as simple cylinders. And the idea behind this is that when we're setting up a figure, I'm thinking of it in kind of two stages where we are looking at, first of all, the kind of two-dimensional aspect of things. That's just a general tilts, proportion, placement. And as I move into this step, the big thing I'm looking at are the th uh, is a three-dimensional gesture. <clears throat> so not only how things are moving side to side, but how are things coming towards us and going away? So things like the legs here, is this leg... Uh, I see that on our model here as turning away from us. So I'm really thinking of it just as a simple direction like this. So even if, you know, this pose is not the most dynamic, but um, there's still quite a bit of gesture to be had. Maybe not so much in the two-dimensional aspect, but three-dimensionally we can start to push this movement of the form here. Um, so that's where, you know, thinking about simple volumes and things like that. Uh, come into play. Um, and once we get this, we can, you know, address a few more anatomical issues here. We can find 
the movement of the scapula and we get this side here. So with this I'm thinking about these kind of relating around this volume of the rib cage. Um, and from there, I think, you know, this is a fair amount of information here to get us started. So we can jump in and, you know, I'm not going to go too crazy into all the, uh, explaining all the anatomy and stuff. That's kind of a story of your life, uh, <laughs> learning that. So, um, but uh, as we go through this and we can start to flesh this out a little bit more, we can talk about things that I'm thinking about. So if we start to, you know, the thing is too, once we set everything up, we can kind of zoom in on different areas and not worry about our proportion getting off. Um, so this way, if we start with those broad aspects, um, it kind of, uh, you're much more likely to succeed here. So let's see, starting with this, I'm thinking, what is the primary action of this pose, right? And a big part of this is her lifting her arm and we feel that pull pulling from her hips and she's resting on her leg here. So as I pull in things like her from her neck into her uh, trapezius, we're going to feel this as a bit more of a bulge here. So this is going to pop up and everything kind of works in contrast or you want to look for contrast and opposite. So as this side lifts up, on the opposite side, we can actually come in here and pull this side of her shoulders as more of a stretch here. So I'm using the anatomy here to help reinforce the gesture. Uh, and that's kind of an important thing when you guys are learning anatomy. You want to learn it in terms of how it can help you um, sort of heighten the sense of the pose or the sense of the gesture versus just putting it in there because it's there, right? So uh, we get this compression at her deltoid. This is gonna pull back to her scapula here. And on this side, we want to emphasize that stretch that we mentioned earlier. So as we pull down her scapula, this is gonna stretch and we can pull into her rib cage here. And what I'll actually do here is let's come across and bracket this. So I'll find the other side of her rib cage coming in. So I'm moving side to side rather than going all the way down. That way I can start to address the kind of total volume of her rib cage here. So let's also get side to side. We can get center and find the bottom of her rib cage here coming down. And as we get this side stretching, pulling down until let's say her obliques here, let's come across. And we're going to find more of a pinch on this side, so we can push more of an overlap here to play up a difference between the two sides. And this comes down. And let's see, coming across here, we can find that volume of her hips pushing around. So uh, if we can pull these overlaps around, this is going to really reinforce that gesture of her hips pulling back here. And uh, let's keep going down here. And five minutes is up, but let's let's go ahead and just run through this here. So we can also find some landmarks here. Uh, she's not completely naked, but let's go ahead and bring in some of these anatomical landmarks. Um, and coming down here, sweeping into her hips, uh, this is going to pull around. And this is... Uh, Uh, an important thing that I'm going to think about here is I kind of want this leg to actually come back a little bit more to push that gesture versus this leg going forward. So as we get down to her butt here, I'm actually pushing this around to emphasize this movement here. And I'm pushing this back around the other uh, direction to emphasize the opposite movement of this leg. So again, I'm taking a few liberties here with uh, the pose. It's going to come around. We get uh, adductors here coming in. And it's going to transition into these muscles here, grouping in from the sartorius from behind. And at her knee here, what I really want to pull out is this wedge of her calf inserting in between this tendon here and this group on this side. And we can pull down to her calf here. 
and this is going to run down into Maliolus. Other things going on here into her foot. So I'm going to keep these kind of simple uh, for now. Um, and on this leg, I said we're going to make this kind of go back a little bit. So let's go ahead and try to do that. I might adjust the, um, that neutral gesture a little bit. Uh, this will come around here. And same thing, we kind of want to look for that overlap or that wedge of these two forms pulling around. And this, uh, we're going to get this kind of fat pad on the outside here into that fat pad behind the knee. And we're getting that same kind of wedge pulling into our calf here. And we are looking kind of down here. So it should actually angle these feet up a little bit. So we feel that perspective on the ground. And this arm is coming, uh, I would say, towards us a little bit more. So once we make that distinction and define the direction here, that's going to help influence um, how we draw this out, actually. So as this arm meets her, um, her torso here, the scapula, we can actually push this overlap around to emphasize the arm coming towards us here. Right? And I've drawn her elbow a little bit high. Let's readjust that here. And pull down to her wrist and outside we get that supinated group. And straighten to her wrist and we get her hand coming out here. And I guess her arm's gonna disappear off the page, but that's alright. Uh supinated group, we're gonna feel that um biceps here. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, we can kind of leave it here, I suppose. Um, let's jump into another pose. Uh, let's see, I guess we can do, yeah, maybe like a profile here. Um, question. We have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Caroline said, how do you know when and where you should take liberties with the pose and gesture? What areas of the body are good for that? Uh, that's a good question. I think it kind of depends on the pose. So let's say with this pose uh, that we have up now, you know, when I look at it, I kind of, I try to think about kind of a narrative behind the pose. In other words, you know, like what is the model doing um, or what's interesting about the pose? And that's mm -hmm. going to kind of define for you, you know, what elements you should push. So if there's some kind of imbalance in the hips uh, or the person's leaning over or something, um, you know, uh, then I'll kind of pick up on those things and let that kind of drive my decision making. But a lot of it does kind of stem from, um, you know, what you actually do with the torso, right? Because, uh, you know, that's dependent on the weight distribution and uh, it kind of sets off the overall sort of um, movement to the body. So let's see, we have head here. So get this we have more of a profile view this time so and you know with this pose we have this very clear you know our body's just kind of built this way right where we have this very clear kind of stretch and pinch with the arch of her back uh, now one kind of tricky thing about a pose like this um, is that we might get a similar kind of weight distribution here where you know if we're seeing this from behind you know, our hips might be higher, right, on one side. But because we're in profile view, that's a little bit harder to judge as far as, you know, both how do you cite that and how do you draw that out, right? Um, so there are a few tips to look for. Um, basically, generally, when somebody is has kind of weight on one side of their body here, most of the time, that is going to be the straight leg so the weight bearing leg tends to be the side of the hips that is higher if you see that and then the opposite leg would be more of a kind of support leg like this so if you see a pose like this and one leg is straight and one leg is bent that's kind of an indicator that there is some kind of funny business going on with the hips in terms of a tilt so in this case you know looking at that far leg we see that this is definitely bent 
So that's kind of a clue to me uh, or an indicator that there's probably some kind of tilt. And remember that the uh, the straight leg tends to be higher on the hips. So with that in mind, I would think that the tilt of her hips would be going back like this. Um, and another kind of indicator is that you might see one knee lower than the other. Now, because we're our eye line is probably around here or so, kind of at eye level, we're not going to see that that same kind of difference. But you know, if we're seeing midway through her waist, we might see more of a disparity between the the uh, the knees. So, if one knee is lower or higher, that's another indicator that there's a tilt in the hips here. Uh, so, I'll kind of set this up. Let's. Uh going here. So again, starting with that simple gesture, we can get things going. Oh, uh, yeah, let's make your head a little bit bigger. All right, so why don't they have light box, huh? <laughs> have you guys uh, seen any more panels that you liked? Let's see. So we can come in here and let's set up this gesture. Um, and we can come down and same thing, let's actually, before we do that, let's set up her scapula here. So we're gonna see these rolling out more to the side as we get this kind of profile view. And here again, we're getting the same kind of stretch versus pinch going on. So let's address that as we come in. So on this side, uh, we're going to get mastoid muscle pulling down. The breasts, and we'll get her rib cage coming in and stretching out through her abdominals here, pulling back. So we want this stretch opposite this kind of pinch. I'll push more of an overlap here as we feel that uh, her oblique compress, pushing up against her iliac crest here for her hip. And it's going to step down and let's also come back and find this medius, gibius maximus, pulling around. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm trying to work around the form here rather than going down one side all the way. So let's complete the form of her hips. And this leg is relatively straight, but we are kind of looking down at it because of our eye level sitting around here. So we would actually be seeing that turning down like this. Let's get this straight. So bicep group here, pulling into this tendon on the outside. This would be attaching to our fibula, running down to malleolus here. Fat pad back here into calf. And on the opposite side, uh, so one thing here is to watch out for where the legs start. So this leg is pulling in from our hips here. So as we get that far leg, uh, we can actually drop that down a little bit lower to, to show that tilt of our hips, right? So if we pull this down from here, that's going to help it feel like her hips are tilting away. But I'll just kind of indicate it for now. And we get uh, whatever this is, deltoid up here, pulling around. We get 
this pull from her lats and teres major and her arm is going to come up here feel that turning away elbow stretch and you know once you kind of get that major gesture down um, it's really about just getting other things to kind of reinforce that so I'll just kind of indicate something for here uh, these are in terms of the gesture these are less important than say her legs and I'm being a little loosey-goosey here Right, so we can knock this leg back. This arm can push back as well. I feel that I have a moderate understanding of general anatomy on linear figures where landmarks are more visible, but I struggle with putting body fat on bigger figures, especially from imagination. Do you have any advice? Uh, that's a good question. Um, a big part of that is kind of understanding uh, how kind of fat forms in the body and you can kind of you know I, there aren't really any diagrams that I've seen so much that um, kind of show that a lot of it is just kind of from practice and what you're going to find is that things tend to flow around joints and connections so on our torso here if we have as an example we have our rib cage and our pelvis what happens is in between the in between areas tend to be where fat and things form. Same thing with limbs. If we have the joint of our knee here, uh, it's the areas around it that tend to uh, have more of the fat. And this is where at the joints tends to be where you see more of the kind of pinch and things to that, things like that. So uh, the thing about the figure is that the joints, because we have to be mobile, um, areas where things connect that have to bend, that tends to be, uh, those tend to be areas where fat doesn't form uh, so readily. So that's something to look out for is understand the joints of the figure um, in terms of the bones and things. Um, yeah, I'll, tr I'll try to answer questions um, before, uh, in between these sets, but uh, go ahead, <laughs> sorry. I can also ask you a question, read them up if you want, or it's up to you, but uh... Really quickly, I've seen a book actually with a fat deposit diagram. Oh yeah, really? And it's the Sarah Simblet Anatomy for Artists book. Oh okay. I... There's it's there's one page like it's what? not a lot of information <laughs> okay. at all. It's one diagram of where fat deposits are on the body, but yeah, yeah. I, uh... for, for me, you just it's through experience really. You know, yeah, what yeah. You notice. Um. Yeah, that's a tricky thing. Uh, I I don't actually own that book. I should pick that up. Um, I've seen that book uh, a lot, but I haven't haven't purchased it. Um, yeah, there's a few things. It, it, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. It's all. It's all. Go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say. Uh, also, they have. There's a few diagrams in um, uh, the uh, Gottfried Baumes book. Um, I don't know if it's. I don't know what's in that other book, but. Um, yeah, there, there are there are a few places that have yeah like one or two diagrams that you'll find, but otherwise it's yeah it's kind of tricky. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's just this here. All right, so getting into this pose uh, this is a little trickier. Uh, so we're getting more of a counterbalance to her weight, so she's definitely supported on this, but we want to make sure that her body here is far enough to the right so that she doesn't fall over. So body's naturally counterbalancing this and I am just adjusting my initial gesture to meet that. And legs coming out. So this leg is coming towards us. Leg is coming back. This leg is going down. This arm is going away from us and we're seeing this kind of roll back of her chest, this tilt back of her hips.
Um, so I'll set that up. Um, and you know, uh, when you guys are doing these gestures, it's okay to get a little messy with these. Um, you'll find that you know your your pencil can go quite a bit darker, and as you kind of start to finish the drawing, a lot of that construction will kind of disappear. So. Uh, I'm not too worried, especially with these quicker poses, about making everything so pretty. Um, also with these demos where I'm using a lot more construction, uh, you know, things tend to get a little messy just because of the process here, but that's all right. So here too, we get the stretch in her neck pulling down to wherever this is. This is going to pull down to pivot the neck here. It's also, I guess we should establish her rib cage a little bit here. Sternum is going to open up. And we get oblique pulling into our pelvis here. Clavicle rolling around. And we'll feel the front plane or the top of her shoulder. So uh, with this, that we have this kind of ball of her shoulder as her humerus pulls out. Um, what I'm really thinking about is reinforcing that sense of the cylinder here. So I'm using that as an excuse to roll around here to reinforce the perspective and in turn, kind of the movement of her arm. Let's get this pulling around here. And her hand comes out. I'll put an indication of that for now. And we also have this shoulder turning out. Down. So same thing here, we're going to feel that roll of her, uh, that humerus here, pulling in underneath that acromion process, we're getting this pull across, lats coming in, rib cage, we can feel, uh, we'll get an indication here of a breast pulling around here, same thing on this side. And we get this pinch. Uh, so again, I'm thinking about this stretch and pinch here. This will pull up and we're gonna feel that oblique pull around and let's come across and find the other side to that. So this side again is kind of stretching. So we'll feel that turn in here. This will pull down. Uh, sternum, this will open up. see center line pull into the belly button here and let's uh, you know we can bring in an indication here of her abdominals pulling down so on this side I want to pull more of that stretch and on this side we can push a little bit of a break here to emphasize that pinch so again like everything I do um, I'm thinking about the gesture, right? So everything kind of comes back to reinforcing that movement. Uh, let's see, so this comes out, we get this overlap, let's push this around here. And pulling across her leg, we're going to feel that sartorius cut through down to her knee. And as we get her knee, this is going to pull out and we're going to feel that kind of top plane of her patella here. And on the inside, we are getting an indication here of that medialis muscle there. This rolls down. And this is going to turn down. And we'll follow the gesture of her shin into uh, that malleolus on the ankle and then behind that we'll get our calf 
And then on the other side, we're probably seeing tibialis anterior. So this will come down. Let's kind of flesh out this knee a little bit. So from that patella, we're going to feel the step down a little bit more so we can get that tibial nose. And this is all going down. We can kind of knock this all back here. And on this leg here, we can step down, add that kind of three finger uh, gap, groin, adductor, and we're going to feel that sartorius. I'm going to Pull this leg out just a little bit more than what I've indicated. Pulling down into that tendon. Uh, let's see, this will come down. Uh, so from the sartorius, we're going to get this kind of S curve. This flows down to the bottom of the knee. It actually ends uh, just about at that tibial nose here. And then we can follow this curve, uh, this S curve here, through to the uh, malleolus on our ankle. So we can use that gesture here to help us construct that leg. And this foot comes down. And we'll just put an indication there of that foot for now. And this arm is coming towards us, so we are getting this kind of twist uh, with this arm. So this will come out. And we've got triceps in the back coming in along, lining up with the steltoid here along this axis. We get this supinated group. And so as her hand uh, pulls out like this, we see the back of her hand. We're getting this kind of ridge muscle uh, twist across like this. So we want to show that form pulling around here. I'll just indicate something for a hand for now. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna get this, and I'll just indicate something for now. Let's see, maybe we can do a longer pose at the end, just so we can kind of get into some of the nitty gritty here. Um, these are just kind of simple a little more diagrammatic here. Um, let's see. Let's find a page here. And let's find another post. Can I read you? Can I read you a question? Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just read them as they come. <laughs> Which proportions do you think are the most important to you when establishing the preliminary gesture sketch? Which proportions are the most? For example. Important? The length of hairline to manubrium and bottom of rib cage to bottom of rib cage. Oh, wait, uh, or rib cage to crotch area, roughly the same length. Uh, yeah. Are you the, measuring anything when you're drawing? Yeah, you can see um, when I was setting these up, I did a little measurement. Um, I, I don't get too, uh, too specific in the beginning, um, but the big things I do look at would be so let's, you know, we can draw this pose out here. Um, I'm just setting up my general proportions of the body here, the torso, where rib cage to the, um, uh, sorry, the pit of the neck to the bottom of the rib cage to the bottom of the hips is about the same. And another, th uh, one of those distances is where your head sits. And then from there, I'll go ahead to the groin. And that will take us just about to the bottom of the legs here. So my whole goal initially is to get the entire figure down as quickly as possible. So I'm looking at these really large, broad proportions. Um, 
And if I mark off the feet like this, you know, it doesn't take much to just bring our feet down to that line. And you can see immediately we start to get a sense of the entire figure without too much fuss, right? Um, and as long as you get that overall proportion, uh, you know, in ballpark, it doesn't have to be super accurate, um, or at least I'm not worried too much about that. Uh, you know, then you can always come in and do smaller proportional measurements. But what I find tends to happen, especially if you go like head, 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 there's always kind of a drift with that, right? So you're, you do one head, the next head is a little bigger, the next head is a little smaller. So things tend to get a little bit wonkier when you're dealing with small increments. So I tend to go as broadly as possible, just halfway, right? Just half, half and half. And that's another thing too, is I try to break things into half because halves, thirds and quarters are easy to, to kind of understand. You know, but when you're talking about like seven and a half heads or, or even eight heads, it gets a little, uh, gets a little difficult. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, those are the proportions that I'm looking at, uh, right off the bat. Um, uh, and you know, once we get this, we can, things are well enough established that we can kind of go ahead and jump into, to this. Let's, let's adjust this here. amazing answer um i guess this one is appropriate for now any tips on how the shoulder blades move and position uh yeah the shoulder blades are that's a big question uh yeah the shoulder blades do move quite a bit uh the thing to look at is you know what are the arms doing uh, if you're not sure where the shoulder blades are that will always be kind of an indicator of what's happening so in this arm for example uh, this is lifting up towards us like this, so it's going back. And what happens with the shoulder blades is it's going to follow that. So in this case, we see the shoulder blades pick up. And we actually see this slight kind of shelf underneath them here as that lifts up with the arm. You can almost think of this as one complete um, section like this that moves together. And the other thing is going to be if your shoulder blades, uh, or if your arms, sorry, are moving up or if they're going away like this so when your arms lift up like this the scapula the shoulder blades will rotate out and they'll rotate around like this so they're going to actually appear more at an angle and they will also appear thinner because they're rotating around the figure like this here and as your arm pulls back like this what's happening is your scapula is pulling out. So you're going to see that a lot thinner and pull away. Uh, the other extreme would be if your arms are going back like this, what's going to happen is your scapula are going to get compressed inwards like this. So you feel more of this compression and you might see this kind of pinch on the uh, trapezius like that. So look at the arms as, so if you kind of understand how the scapula move with the arms and you can kind of look to the arms to help you kind of decide what the scapula are actually doing. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's see, we should probably, let's set up a little bit more construction here. So I'll do one more of these and then maybe we can do something a little different, um, but this will come out. And we'll get our arm coming across, and we get triceps moving behind. And let's uh, you know, make it, I'm giving her a big rib cage. Let's narrow that out just a little bit here. So we'll feel more of this stretch coming down. Uh, we'll again get her hips. Let's emphasize this kind of pinch in here. And we'll feel her, feel her obliques come in. And there's something sneaky going on here with this pose uh, that I'll point out in a second. Close this off. We'll step down into that sacrum here. 
so yeah, with this pose, the sneaky thing, uh, you know, normally we would say that because she's resting on this leg, this is a straight leg, uh, we'd see her hips kind of tilting this way more. Uh, but she's actually kind of pushing up on her toe down here, which is straightening out her hips. You actually see that happen a lot with uh, like dancers. They will push up their hips and it's meant to give the illusion that they're floating. So you got to be kind of careful with that when you're making your analysis here in terms of, you know, what the legs are doing. So, you know, there's not really any guaranteed rule for, for any of this stuff, but um, something to think about. It's always going to be that need for analysis of what, what the model's doing. So the adductor here is going to come down. Uh-oh. It's also a good idea to have a bunch of pencils um, <laughs> sharpened up and ready to go. Is it important to hold the pencil like this? Uh, what was that? Sorry, I. What What did is you say? It important <laughs> to learn how to draw holding the pencil the way. You oh, uh, it's not necessary. Um, it kind of depends on what you want to do with it, but um, this is, uh, I guess, if you want those fancy calligraphic calligraphic lines, then yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> But this is definitely something I practiced a lot. I didn't start off drawing like this. I know it's really awkward when you first start off trying to, to hold it like this. It's just that, you know, you can get a much broader variety of line work. And the other thing about it is that as you're drawing, because you're pulling along the length of the barrel uh, or you're dragging it across, with every stroke, you're, you're actually kind of sharpening the pencil versus holding it like this and digging into the tip and flattening it. So this actually does allow you to draw a little bit longer without, um, without the need to uh, sharpen your pencil. On top of that, there's also, there are a number of things you can think about with the line weight. So if you're able to manipulate that, for example, if we draw like a cylinder here, you know, every form can have kind of a top and bottom. And you can indicate or suggest weight to a form by giving it a harder or darker line. You can also indicate a sense of light and shadow by, you know, using darker or harder lines. Or also, like with the figure, for example, we can indicate these straight hard lines versus these softer, wispier lines to communicate the difference between bone and tendon and flesh. Uh, so yeah, it, it kind of depends what you want to do, but you know, if I'm drawing in like my sketchbook and stuff, I'll with a pen or whatever, I'll hold it with the pen grip more. Uh, I feel like this might be kind of specific to, um, the figure, uh, this, this type of drawing, I suppose. And I guess it's meant to imitate more of like a brush. Uh, and uh, let's see, something like this coming across. And her arms coming out here. This will come out, and we get this pinch for her scapula pulling out. Let's also define this coming around here. And I'm making some adjustments as I go, that's all right.
right, and we're getting this kind of pinch in here. Getting across to her scapula, turning under, so I'm going to exaggerate this. And yeah, these anatomy here is getting a little pushed, mainly because I'm trying to explain all this stuff as I go. It tends to tend to overstate a lot of things. All right, let's see. Let's find some different poses. Maybe maybe we have some sitting ones here. Question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Here's another one. When are you drawing, or when you are drawing from reference, are you trying to capture the shape of the muscle by simplifying it? Uh, yeah, generally, well, it kind of depends too. <laughs> Everything depends. Um, but yeah, no, when I'm drawing from, um, yeah, reference, uh, you know, it's, it's always going to be kind of a back and forth between, you know, do you want to simplify or, over exaggerate certain things or do you or do you want to kind of do you see something in the reference that looks aesthetically pleasing or you like the way that it's it is in the reference um so i'll kind of it kind of depends what i want to do with the drawing so sometimes i'll use things that i see in the reference and draw them exactly as i see them because i think it looks cool or i think it helps the the pose or the drawing um and sometimes i'll look at something and say oh that's yeah, it's maybe too complicated. Uh, let's simplify it. Or maybe it's uh, too soft or too simple. Then I might, you know, let's pull that muscle out a little bit more to to um, uh, evoke a certain feeling or something like that, right? So it all kind of depends, you know, and as you draw more and more and you, you get a better sense of what you want out of your drawing, you'll have a better idea of, you know, things you can subdue, things you can pull forward and uh, you know, it's just building your that design sensibility, right? Uh, let's see. So we drop this kind of a bit more of a reclining pose. So we have this stretch coming across this way here, I would say, and maybe this shoulder is dropping down a little bit. And overall, her body is swinging back to here. And we can get the legs coming through. So again, we can find this broad measurement here to get us into that ballpark. This leg forward. And so drop down and we'll get this coming forward here. So I'll you know another important thing is if you if you have a model uh, resting on something, it's good practice to try to include that. Uh, a lot of times that will help you understand the perspective a little bit better, especially if it's something more geometric like this chair. Uh, and also it just, you know, makes it so it doesn't feel like your figure's floating on the page. So it's good, good idea to include that stuff. Kirk Emily said, my teacher went to Art Center and he said they were encouraged to yell when placing gesture lines. Is to that true? yell when placing gesture. I <laughs> don't know about that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> huh. That's funny because my teacher at Art Center was like, she was really soft-spoken and very gentle. I couldn't imagine her... <laughs> Telling us to do something Internally. like that. 
any tips on finding your own anatomy shorthand? Uh, that really comes with practice, but it's kind of like, you know, I'm sure you've heard the advice of when you're, you know, don't look like finding your own style, uh, quote unquote, but, you know, looking at other artists is a good way to do it, right? How do, how do other artists draw like a deltoid? How do other artists draw pecs or, or whatever it might be? You know, find an artist that you like um, and study and copy what they do and find another artist that does it a different way and study and copy the way they do. And eventually you kind of, just like with your style, you come up with your own ideas of what what you like to see and, you know, you can go from there. So, you know, I'm very, uh, I studied a lot of like Michelangelo and Rubens and all those classical artists, um, the old masters when I was in school. So that has a big influence on the way I draw uh, in terms of, you know, how I design the anatomy and stuff. Um, but as I moved into more animation, that also influenced how I, how I draw. So, you know, my style started to change quite a bit and the aesthetics I had started to change, but you know, all those things are still there. It's just a matter of, um, you know, it just sort of becomes its own thing after they all get mixed together in that pot, right? Uh, so here I'm being a little less, uh, doing a little less construction and being a little more direct with some of this stuff here. Uh, but you can see I'm still, still bracketing, still finding these two sides. Let's relate those together. We can get clavicle here. Find this wrapping up and around. Uh, so here I might think, uh, when I do, when I draw more like this, I'm thinking more about design uh, and how I might, well, it's always there, but, um, you know, big thing with this, for example, I'm really, I really want to push this movement of her body flowing down. So even as I draw things like a breast here, you know, you don't want to just draw them like this. I'm, I'm pulling them off of that gesture here. So, and things like her belly button, you know, I'm going to pull this with that gesture instead of just drawing a little mark like that. So eventually, you know, the more comfortable you get with the anatomy and stuff, um, you can start to think about that design aspect to it a little bit more. So this side, we got rib cage coming down. And we are getting this pinch for her obliques. Again, you see everything that I do, I'm trying to follow this gesture here. And we let's break that a little bit. Let's put an area of contrast here where you get our hips really pushing up against that um, that chair here. And this leg is gonna come forward. get this break of her um, adductors, and then we feel that sartorius cut through. And let's think about this volume here. So this will pull forward, fastus lateralis. Uh, straight of this tendon coming in. And, you know, before I go too far with this leg, let's jump around a little bit. Um, maybe we can flesh out her torso a little bit more. So get her ribcage pinching, and we feel this compression against her um, abdominals here. Again, with these, thinking about that gesture first and foremost. So let's get these moving with that. Get the volume of her ribcage completing through here. And then we step down for her, uh, whatever.
whatever that is, <laughs> for oblique here. And then opposite that, we're also going to get, we can pull in some of the shadows. So here we're finding the edge of her rib cage opening up into a thoracic arch. And then we feel this edge of her abdominals here. And this is going to pull in underneath her belly button. And we come back around her oblique here. So. That shadow shape, uh, we can get, uh, we can use that to help us reinforce that gesture. And here, this comes down, and this is rolling into her elite crest, sloping down. And this leg is going to stretch out. And I feel like it is kind of coming towards us a little bit. So let's, uh, as I address her, her knee, for example, I'm pushing this around to reinforce that, uh, that movement, right? And I probably have this a little bit short. That's right. Maybe we'll just adjust that a little bit. And this knee comes in. Step into that tibial nose here. So I'm finding, uh, I'm always looking to find the joints and build around them. So once I get this, you know, we can come down and follow that shin bone here into her foot. malleolus here into her foot another good thing to practice is get in the habit of always drawing hands and feet when you have the opportunity the thing I always see students do is they'll be drawing an arm and they'll come down to the wrist and I'll see them stop for a little bit and think about it. And then they'll just go and draw somewhere else. <laughs> but it's, you know, even if it's just as simple as this, just put something in there, uh, get in the habit um, of doing that. And over time, you know, you'll, you'll get better at it. But if you keep avoiding it, you're never going to get better at drawing those hands. Put them in the pockets and put yeah, grass yeah, over Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't put grass over the feet. Just draw them out. Uh, let's see here. How important do you think speed is while drawing? Do you think it's important to set a timer when learning? Uh, so there's a reason for doing quicker poses and a reason for doing longer poses. Generally speaking, don't worry about speed. Just go at whatever pace you need to to get things done. The reason we do, let's say, like two-minute poses um, is because the time forces you to think about specific things. Because a lot of times, uh, and I see I see that happen with students a lot is that you know they'll uh, jump into like doing really specific details right off the bat, right? But when you only have two minutes, it forces you because you don't have the time. Then you really have to just focus on the gesture, right? So it's that limitation is there to get you to do something specific. But generally, I would say, don't worry. Uh, and, you know, even in two minutes, you know, it's not really about how fast you draw, but it's about making good decisions, right? If you can, instead of drawing super fast and doing all these lines here, if you just slow down and spend the same amount of time, but you just draw the one line that you want after feeling it out a little bit, um, that's better than, than doing all this, right? And over time, the more you practice doing those good decisions, um, you can, you get quicker at making those decisions, right? Um, but you gotta, you kind of have to slow down to speed up. That sounds kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to get good at doing quick sketch, do, do longer poses. And if you want to 
not have your long poses feel very stiff and things like that, you want to do some quick sketch. Okay, got another one here. Do you do these kind of studies digitally? If so, do you have any tips for getting comfortable at drawing digitally? Uh, yeah, I, I do these a lot. Actually, if you have a YouTube channel, if you see the stream, I every now and then I'll stream some figure drawing sets like this. Uh, it's on all the time. I see him on <laughs> YouTube streaming. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just practice, you know, um, and I would say don't overcomplicate the process, right? I just pick like one brush and just stick with that through the whole drawing. Uh, and you know, it's a really simple brush too. It's just something with like a, you know, like a pressure sensitivity for the line uh, thickness, uh, kind of like a brush pen. Uh, just keep it simple and just start drawing with that. Uh, you know, um, and essentially I, you know, when I draw digitally or when I paint digitally and stuff, it's, I tend to make it as close as possible as, my own process for painting and drawing traditionally. So it's usually just like one or two brushes, you know, the, the main, I think the best thing digitally is just being able to use different layers. So I might do like my under drawing here on one layer and then I can knock it back and then do the finish on top on a different layer. Right. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, it's just, just a ton of practice and, you know, the skills you learn doing things traditionally will directly translate uh, to to digital work because, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a stylus or a pen or a pencil, uh, you know, you're still drawing. And drawing is not really about the marks you make, but it's how you break things down and think about form and stuff like that. Uh, let's see, let's find another pose here. Maybe we can do make it a little bit looser here. Or maybe a bit more direct. We have yeah, a question. Oh, past, yep. past the spine, where do you usually have the line of motion follow? Uh, past the spine, uh, that will depend on the pose. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's going to run through a leg uh, or something. Um, and, you know, kind of like what I was mentioning earlier, you know, when you look at like the, the weight distribution, um, let's say you have a pose like this where, uh, you know, somebody's doing this, right? Uh, what, what, what is that leg doing here? I don't even <laughs> but, you know, we might get the action going through here, but what you'll notice is that pushes into the hips and then we get that kind of flowing into the leg like this, right? So that's kind of where the movement goes. So something like this, for example, this flows down. Maybe it does kind of come out into this leg and we get a transition here. So yeah, it just kind of depends on what uh, what the pose is, but you know, if you're moving down the spine, that's that probably means you're gonna be moving into the legs So here with this, let's actually push her, um, open up her shoulders here. So we're kind of looking into them. And then we want to push her head down a little bit. So we really get her leaning into this pose.
a lot of times as I set up things like the gesture, I'll, I'm kind of acting out the pose in my mind, like imagining uh, I'm in that pose to kind of feel where that tension is, where's the weight. So here we have the stretch in her neck and we really feel her shoulders kind of come up and over here. in process. It's a big stretch in her neck and then we feel this whole thing kind of roll forward. Any advice on making twist poses like this not feel awkward or disproportionate? Uh, awkward or disproportionate? I think the main thing is just setting up your proportions in the beginning and um, kind of slowing down to to line things up a little bit more. You know, so I'm really looking at like pose it, in twists. It's all about that center line, right? So you can have the exact same shape for your figure, but depending on what you do with that center line, that will tell a very different story, right? So with this, what I'm really focusing on is getting, looking at the elements that follow her center. So like the pit of her neck, for example, here pointing out in this way versus things like her belly button pointing out this way, right? And if you can get those to kind of oppose each other, you're probably going to get a pretty good twist. And then, yeah, as far as getting the things not to go kind of crazy, um, <laughs> let's just slow down a little bit and make sure we get our structure for things like our rib cage and stuff set up properly. So I'm not afraid to just, you know, draw right through this arm to make sure that that volume is correct. It's good to kind of get in that habit. Um, and then we can find her obliques in here and then obliques on this side so I'm still following that same kind of bracketing idea here and we can adjust this a little bit let's get this hip coming back you know so here I'm we can actually box our hips out a little bit if we want to really make that solid and that's really gonna reinforce that shift in the angle So our ribcage is going to be pushing over. We're going to feel thoracic arch coming through here. And as she twists, we do get these pinches coming around from her, her side here. And her belly button will also help reinforce that. If we design it as a shape to move with that gesture, This might transition into her abdominals here. Get the side of her oblique here. Get the other side of her abdominals here. down it's gonna shift a little bit let's that's all right we'll just push this hand behind another thing you know to kind of think about is that you know, I'm not too worried about making this look exactly like the reference so if things change like for example I got this push this arm in a different place um, I'll just kind of roll with it, you know, and try to make the drawing itself work. Because 
at the end of the day, you know, the, the model will step off the stage or the reference won't be there. And it's only the, your drawing that people are going to look at, right? So I'm more kind of responding to what the drawing needs as opposed to how to make it look more like the reference that I see. Now, that's different from, you know, I'm, I might try to capture the energy of the reference. Uh, that tends to be more what I'm thinking about as far as, well, actually using the reference, right? Yeah, don't get too caught up in making everything line up perfectly because it's not going to happen. So this leg is, what is it doing? Who knows? And we actually have a question about the legs too. Yeah. How do the legs connect to the torso? How do the legs connect to the torso? Uh, that is a kind of a big question, but um, <laughs> we can jump into it really quick. Um, the one thing I will say is that um, when we are standing upright, you have your hips here. Your legs will step, uh, sorry, your hips will come down and your legs actually attach a little bit below the top of the iliac crest here, your pelvis, and they swing in from the back of your butt. So a big thing with the legs is that they actually do overlap on top of that hip box that we think of. And so when you lift your leg up, it actually swings from the bottom of your butt like this. So a common thing that I see that you want to avoid is drawing your hips and then drawing the legs below it like this. You always want to think about it actually starting on the front of the hips, right? Or if you're bending a leg, you don't want to bend the leg from down here like this, right? It should stem from in front. So as I draw this leg, for example, you can see that I'm overlapping that volume on top of this hip box here. So it's a very kind of simplified answer. That's, uh, that's one big thing that you kind of want to be thinking about in terms of connecting it. Um, otherwise, you know, it's pretty much just a cylinder socketing onto a box like this, you know. It's not too much, much more complicated than that. Well, it kind of is uh, <laughs> if you get into all the anatomy. But as far as a simple form, right, that's what I am um, really thinking about. Let's see. So this comes forward here. Back of the leg. Biceps group uh, pulling into this tendon, and we feel this. Um, so you know there obviously are some muscles in here going on. It's the, the tensor muscle coming in, the glutes rolling around here, vastus lateralis. Um, coming in. And calf uh, come down. So I feel here. Let's find that um, malleolus here. And you know, I'm I'm calling out all this anatomy. It probably might not mean anything to <laughs> to you guys, uh, to a lot of you. But um, you know, it's just to point out that you know everything I do I'm I'm there is kind of a reason for it uh, every kind of mark that I make and I'm it's either based on the anatomy or just simply what I want to do with the gesture you know so it's either going to be an anatomical thing that I'm calling out or something that I want to say design to pull with the gesture here and if it doesn't do kind of one or ideally both of those things, then uh, usually I'll kind of omit it or leave it out. Uh, let's see. Get ready for this next question. Kurt. Yep, go ahead. 
what are you Kurt, personally striving towards getting better at in your figure drawing currently what am i striving that is a very good question uh <laughs> and a tricky question <laughs> i don't know um i you know a, a big thing i think about nowadays when i'm doing figure drawing is really just kind of exploring different styles uh finding interesting ways of describing things or uh designing things mm. um you know because and you know obviously like i'm still learning stuff about anatomy and stuff like that it's kind of an ongoing thing every time you know i'll read I'll always skim through some anatomy stuff and find something interesting that i didn't really think about um but yeah the big thing is just looking at different styles and and coming up with interesting ways of of communicating things uh so, you know, I'll be copying other artists and things like that and trying to think about, you know, why they're doing the things they're doing um, and seeing if I can incorporate some of that into my own drawing. Um, Has this always been a thing or like when you were starting out, was, did you have a different focus? Oh, yeah, definitely starting out, you know, I, I was just like, how, how to draw a box? Uh, <laughs> how do I draw anatomy and stuff? Um <laughs> You know, but once you kind of get comfortable with that, there's a whole nother game beyond that, right? Um, mm. And that's, you know, what do you do with the drawing, right? It's because uh, it's not just drawing for the sake of drawing. Um, but, uh, yeah, kind of giving giving it a bit more of a, um, a purpose. And that doesn't have to be, like, professional. It could just be your own personal desire and what you want to see or you know, discover new things. Um, and a big part of it for me really is just, I just like the feeling of the pencil on the paper <laughs> and stuff like that. So uh, I almost don't really care what it looks like as long as I had fun drawing it, <laughs> the experience. I, I kind of relate to that a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, I'll just do, like, whatever. Um, and if you see, like, all my old pads, like, there'll be like a really a more kind of academic classical drawing. And then the next page will be something really scribbly and cartoony and, and random. So yeah, I'm just kind of having fun um, most of the time. But uh, if I do sit down and think about it, um, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about kind of, I guess, problem solving, different ways of solving the problem, right? But yeah, there's nothing beat like doing this now after not doing a lot of traditional. This this feels amazing. Um, <laughs> the pencil on the paper. I'm like, oh man, this is great. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll do one more here and we can uh, call it a day for this workshop. Oh, we're doing good. Um, what tips do you have for doing live sketching where people are constantly walking or moving? Oh, like, uh, like the, the people that you're drawing, I suppose. Um, yes. Yeah, so, do you mean like a model or do you mean like people, like people, people around you? Like you're outside in public. Live sketching. Oh yeah. So one thing, um, uh, to kind of practice, uh, and this gets into like, you know, the, the time, like drawing quickly, that was asked earlier um you know have students do like one minute poses right and with the one minute poses obviously it's not about getting all the detail there but it's about honing your ability to kind of see the overall pose all at once right so like when i look at this pose for example my initial kind of uh reaction right if i'm just drawing a really simple thing is that she's going like this and you know i can just glance at it and kind of pick up on this gesture here right this looks kind of silly but but, you know, we could take this and flesh it out. We have all the information we need to continue this, right? And it's about honing your ability to, doing these really quick, like, one-minute poses, is honing your ability to see that initial kind of silhouette and initial action. And I think of it like you build your your Terminator vision where you <laughs> kind of look around the room and, you know, he, like, outlines people and there's, like, a list of things about them that are <laughs> pertinent. Um, 
so at first glance, you know, if you can get that initial uh, idea down of what they're doing, then as people move around, um, you have your pose locked down in the first few seconds, uh, then you can just use that person as reference, right? Are they wearing baseball cap? What kind of cap are they wearing? Um, maybe they have a sweater on, who knows? Uh, you know, but then you can kind of fill in the blanks here as far as the details uh, without having to have that person stand still, right? Um, so you just need to get that initial gesture down. Uh, yeah, there you go. Does the, <laughs> does, does the jacket fit? Um, get that initial gesture down, and then you can kind of sort of use the person that's walking around as reference, right? So it's good to kind of like watch people and then they might kind of strike a pose for half a second that you like, and then you can, um, you know, just really quickly kind of block that in, whatever they're doing. Um, and then you can take your time after that to, to kind of flesh it out. But that initial sort of analysis of what that gesture is, is, is the real key to doing it. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and, you know, you can obviously kind of push the proportions and stuff as you, as you do that. Um, you know, whatever, but that's kind of, at least that's what I kind of, kind of focus on when I'm doing that. Um, or that's a strategy I use to, to help. So let's see, we got this tilt here. We got uh, kind of lifting up her leg here and her arm comes back and does something. So this is a little bit bigger here, so I guess we can spend a little more time doing stuff. Tips on keeping the planes of the body separate without relying too heavily on tone and shading. Uh, you want to think about corners. Um, so, uh, yeah, the main thing. So, and that comes down to like your construction, right? So, if you think about, if we're drawing a box here, for example, we can have the shape of the box, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a flat shape until we actually include this inside corner here and suddenly the inside form comes forward so the same thing applies to a person if we're drawing for example a torso here we can have kind of a flat shape until we start to add elements that fall on the corners here like this and maybe we also include center line right um, but you can see the details that I'm putting on this person are the ones that fall along this corner axis here. So it's just like the box. And once we do that, we start to understand that we have a front and side plane. So whenever I'm, especially if I'm just doing a line drawing, that's the main thing I'll focus on. Um, so where are the corners of the form? That's the important thing. Uh, so like her head, for example. Um, oh, go ahead. Do you have a question? Great tip. Sorry. Just I'm mind blown. Oh, <laughs> like her head here. You know, I'm thinking about her eyebrows being this corner. And you can see that this is lining up with the corner of the shape of her hair here. 
So those two together start to define for us the plane of her head. And I might even, you know, it's not necessarily toning it out, but I might even go ahead and do something like this to show her cheek and do something like that. And suddenly we have kind of the planes of, of her head here. So, uh, yeah, and you know, it's kind of why I focus so heavily on construction when I'm like teaching and stuff, because you know, when you're drawing a box and things, when you're applying anatomy to it, it's not really about just putting the anatomy there, but it's about kind of understanding what anatomy relates to the actual corners of the box, right? And once you kind of understand those alignments, then you can pull out certain forms that you know will help you kind of, uh, that, that you know kind of fall in those corners, right? So, uh, yeah, construction mm. is is key. If you, to, to really yeah. kind of understand this, but uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, it's an hour and a half. You can keep going, but it's, I'm gonna start asking the question that I've skipped before, so. Okay. Um, let's see. Or this one just came up. Any tips on knowing what muscles you're drawing when it's not super developed on the surface? I find the muscle groups all kind of blend together and end up copying shapes instead of understanding the underlying form. Um, yeah, you really want to go out of your way to do the construction, because uh, then you're then you're kind of just forcing yourself to put um uh put a put a word or an idea to the to what you know is there i guess um and also looking at um looking at other artists so you might look at well, always bring up renaissance artists renaissance artists because they're so exaggerated uh but finding a similar pose that they've done and they're probably going to show you more of the anatomy that would be there if if it wasn't just kind of a normal person. <laughs> so that can kind of help you understand what what is um, what is below the surface without getting, when the information is not there. And, you know, the more you understand about the anatomy or more you practice it, the more you actually see that is, that might be like super subtle that you might not really understand initially, you know. So also practice <laughs> and experience. Practice. <laughs> How do you apply these studies to your own style? To my own style. Um, yeah, you know. A this big... is similar to what we've answered before. Like just. Yeah. Uh, think about style too much. Yeah. Don't think about style. I mean. One of the big benefits of doing these kind of studies is just the experience factor, you know? Um, so like, as an example, you know, how do you draw somebody with, you know, their leg coming towards you and their foot, you know, you, you get like a crazy foreshortened pose like this. Um, you'll have a much better idea of how to do that. If you, if you've practiced that kind of angle, uh, a hundred times, you know, over and over. So a big thing um, with just figure drawing and stuff is that the model will present you with poses and, and angles and things that you might not necessarily expect, right? And a good idea is instead of moving to a different um, place or jumping to another reference image is just try and draw that as awkward as it might be because it will just add to your experience in terms of you know, what you're familiar with. Uh, so, um, yeah, beyond style, uh, uh, I mean, honestly, I, that kind of comes, part of that is just like the exploration of it, you know, as you're drawing. Um, but a, more of that comes from looking at other artists, I would say. But for studies like this, that it's that experience factor of having drawn something through studying, you know, hundreds of times, then when it 
that same kind of thing presents itself in another situation, you're, you're ready. Um, it's like wax on, wax off, right? You, mm-hmm. <laughs> you have that reaction of just being able to, um, you know, understand what's going it'll, on. It'll come to you. Yeah. You I, know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Won't make sense now, but yeah, when it, when it happens, you'll, Yeah. <laughs> Do you think there are any disadvantages to studying from photos versus life? Uh, yeah, nothing quite beats life, I would say. Um, yeah. And, you know, a big part of it is, uh, well, at least, you know, when you're first starting off, um, what I found was really helpful was being able to do that, like move around the figures. So if I'm not sure what's going on, uh, it helps to look at things from a different angle. You see things as three dimensional. Um, sometimes with photography, uh, you know, it'll obscure certain details or with the lighting, it's like a weird lighting situation and you can't quite get a better view of it. Um, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I wish I could just go figure drawing right now. <laughs> so. But, you know, that's not to say reference isn't bad, you know. Obviously, it's better than than no reference, so. Uh, I was fortunate enough, you know, when I was learning to essentially have access to life drawing pretty much every single day. So, like, you know, while I was in school, I I was basically life drawing every single day. Have you been going at all? No, not recently. I haven't, I don't really go outside anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Caroline said, do you bother doing full construction for really for shortened poses? Uh, Usually no. Uh, But if you're, if you're trying to understand it and to practice, I I suggest you try it um, just to really test yourself on, on your construction and stuff. I will ask a follow-up question for Caroline. Do you have any tips on drawing anime? On anime? Um, that is kind of different from, from figure drawing. <laughs> that is more of a stylistic thing in terms of looking at other <laughs> artists. Caroline's so mad right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, t- typical Carol. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I got one that we skipped earlier. Do you have any tips for drawing wrinkly old people? Wrinkly old people. Um, uh, hmm. <laughs> you know, a lot of, I think, I feel like to really draw wrinkly old people, you really have to know your anatomy. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, the anatomy shows through so much. Uh, those, honestly, like, wrinkly old people are the funnest to draw because of that fact. It's like a, a chance to like to go crazy and draw everything you know because when you're drawing like young people like this a lot of times you're you're oversimplifying things you don't want to overstate the anatomy um but uh yeah with with old people you can go crazy and 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 have fun <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, you got to really know your bone structure and and all that jazz.
I hope I got through everybody's questions. Um, what time is it? 3.40. Yeah, an hour and 40 minutes. That was pretty good. Yeah. Kirk, thank you so much. Yeah. I'll no let problem. you finish out this post and then we'll wrap it up. Cool. Um, does anybody else have any questions before we... Oh, there was one about lighting. Oh, yeah. Um, can you ask again if I've skipped? Sorry, Ayla. How do you light figures? How do I light figures? Uh, it kind of depends. You know, sometimes I will follow uh, the light source that I'm seeing if it's if it looks cool <laughs> or I like it. Um, but, you know, you might get a situation where it's more ambient light. Um, then I'll tend to focus more on uh, designing it with a simple top-down lighting. Um, so there are different lighting kind of modes you can go into. Uh, but, um, yeah, generally it's it's the simpler you can keep it, the better. Unless you're, well, I guess unless you want to there's a reason you want to draw that, um, that really complex lighting. Um, but you know, like with something like this, I'm not worrying too much. There is this kind of reflected light back here, but I'm generally just keeping it to, to one light source. And it's mainly just to make like a clearer statement, you know, I find that if you go too crazy, uh, it, it also depends on the, um, the scope of the drawing, right? So this is kind of a quicker pose. I don't really have time to render all that, so I will um, opt to keep it a bit simpler. But uh, but yeah, generally the simpler the better. It will tend to read better just as a drawing. What resources did you look into while learning hands? Um. There is a, oh, what? <laughs> there, there's a book called Nothing. Book of a Hundred Hands by George Bridgman. Book of a Hundred Hands. One Hundred Hands. And what really helped me was copying this book cover to cover, literally every single drawing. Uh, I just spent like a week doing that. Um, and I did that twice um, on top of... Um, the thing I mentioned earlier, you know, when you're doing these figure studies, uh, go ahead and draw the hands in. Make it a habit to, to always include the hands in some form, even if it's just a simple kind of gesture here, you know. Um, and I also find that looking at um, animation is a good place to learn hands because I think a lot of hand anatomy things I see, they get too in-depth with all the... Um, the tendons and stuff and it becomes too too much um to to understand how to draw like a simplified hand you know um so animation look at like milk milk call draws amazing hands is it k-h-a-l or k-h k-8 the, the the disney animator guy maybe it's this this looks more correct milk call uh, so if you got like Merlin's hands from Sword of the Stone, um, I actually learned a lot in terms of drawing realistic hands actually from, from drawing from animation, surprisingly. Yeah, 101 Dalmatians, uh, all those old Disney movies actually. I share some interesting facts about Bridgman. Yeah. Oh, wait. I I looked into this and I like can't believe it. Uh huh. He taught so many people. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Like <laughs> Will Eisner came out of there. Drew Andrew Loomis came out of Bridgman. Norman Rockwell came out of Bridgman. Yeah. Like Dean Cornwell came out of Bridgman. Yep. Frank <laughs> Riley. Yep. The Riley Method. <laughs> like I can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, even uh, this guy named Lorzer Feidelson, 
uh, took Bridgman's class, and he's the guy that taught Glenn Vilpu and Harry Carmian. Wow. And Carl Ganass and all those guys. So that's a whole nother line. Everyone kind of touched Bridgman to some degree. Although he did say that he didn't learn anything from Bridgman, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Maybe it's just being around all those artists at the school, right? Yeah. It's the Art Student League in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day. Man, that would have been an awesome experience to, to visit. I, I would have failed and burned. It would have been too much pressure. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess we can. I don't think I'm going to do too much more to this, but. Uh... All right, last minute question, tips on simplifying the pelvis. Do you use a box or do you use a bucket? I use different things, actually. Uh, it kind of depends. Um, sometimes I'll use a bucket. Sometimes I'll use a box. Sometimes I'll use a cylinder like this. Uh, it kind of it, it mm -hmm. depends on the model, right? Some models, like there's one model, I don't know if you guys, if you're in California and you've gone to any kind of figure drawing, you might know Sarah Streeter. She's this ballet mm. dancer, um, but like her body, I think of more of like this. Uh, that looks just like Sarah. And it looks just like Sarah. Yep. So <laughs> <laughs> you just draw her head and she's always got a bun on and, and you know, you got, you got Sarah Streeter. So eventually what happens, you know, the more comfortable you get with these forms is that you can start to kind of design them. Um, and you can use different forms for different characters or body types and things like that. So, uh, yeah, it, it all just kind of depends. Um, but generally speaking, I will say, you know, if you're learning and try to figure thing, figure and you're figuring things out, uh, stick with one of these two, the box or the, the bucket here. Um, and I, I tend to prefer the box mainly because, it gets you thinking in this mode, right? You start thinking about corners and form and structure. Um, and you can start with a bucket and turn it into a box as well, because a bucket might be easier to draw uh, before you jump into that box, right? So um, anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, cool. Um, I guess we can call it here. Unless do you guys have any other questions or anything? Uh, this is this is um, a lot of fun. <laughs> I think everybody's just information overload. <laughs> Favorite muscles to draw. Favorite muscles to draw. Uh, oh boy, I have one. Deltoid. Yeah, that, you know, I was going to say that. I, was I like the about shoulder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, deltoids are always something satisfying about that. Um, yeah, shoulders. Gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess um, yeah, we'll we'll stop it here. Kirk, cool. thank you very much, everybody. Hope you like. Hope you enjoy everything. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, this, was, this was awesome. Yeah. Kirk, are you teaching classes? Right, so they can sign up. Yeah, I'm taking a break for the rest of the year, um, but we'll start up again rest of the year? next year. Yeah, I, I'm like, I'm so tired from work right now. <laughs> so I, I've had to like cut something yeah. out, you know, so I have some right. time to myself. But um, anyway, yeah. Well, you have a. I saw you. You sell the recordings, right? Like the like. Yeah, yeah. The they're lectures. they're audit classes. Um, I also have like mentorship slots open if you guys are interested in that. Uh, and that's um, just, it's all on your website, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can just go to the website. Oh. Um, also on YouTube. Just check oh, out. Okay. There's a ton of free videos on YouTube you guys can check out. And I stream there once in a while. So come in, say hi, and hang out. <laughs> cool. So, all right, Kirk. Thank you very all much. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, yeah. And you guys, we have uh, Chelsea, what's next? We have. We have um, a panel coming up at. 5 p.m. So that's about an hour. Um, and it's called Failures and Lessons. And it's kind of a follow up to our panel yesterday about how we broke into the industry. So now we're going to talk about um, things we did wrong. Basically, we didn't break it. <laughs> things we learned. <laughs> yeah. 
and red flags and how to spot them and yeah they should be cool that's yeah that sounds good it's uh yeah, and then portfolio review again at seven and then we're done <laughs> we might have game night at nine so we'll see <laughs> we will see <laughs> it's been a long weekend <laughs> cool um thank you guys awesome well yeah guys have fun at if you guys are going to that that lecture go have fun um and thanks again dylan and chelsea for having me on yeah yeah thank uh, you kirk really really informative yes yeah. great cool um all right see you guys yeah see you guys i'll later. see you guys later bye bye, bye.